This is just a quick video to show the click and cut K and K force in action. Um, mainly just to test some of my new audio visual equipment. Uh, as I'm going to start doing a few more uh, videos with some new kit now that I'm not in the uh, the college workshop anymore. So uh, this is a die cutting machine, and I basically just want to run through a few settings just to show uh, how to cut a stencil out of polypropylene. So let's have a quick look at the software settings. So this is my high tech screen capture software. I'm holding tablet in front of the uh, the cutter. I say tablet, it's actually a little Windows 10 PC with a touchscreen interface. So if I hit cutter, that is the uh, cutter settings and I've actually set up a pre-made um, setting for 0.8 millimeter polypropylene and I'll go through this in some detail in 5 minute Friday at some point but uh, main settings are blade offset, I'm using a blue blade, I'm cutting through 10 times which is outrageous and just going from 28 to 280. Generally the end depth, you divide it by the number of cuts in order to get the, uh, the start in depth. So I'm gonna home the machine and then I'm gonna press cut and then uh, maybe do a bit of a time lapse of the thing cutting. So this is one of my pet peeves with the k, &K Force machine. There's a blue light whenever you actually wanna do anything which makes things really difficult. Um, I've put it in set orange mode and I'll go through this in a five minute Friday. Well, basically, you can use the arrow keys on my uh, my little laptop just to set a position. I'll set somewhere there. That's probably fine. Click OK, and then we'll hit cut. Right. Let's see if I can do a time lapse. Just thought I'd show you this, this is pretty typical of uh, what happens when you're cutting thicker materials. The fact that I've spaced space the rollers out unequally means that there's, um, it's dragging the thing out, it's trying to walk the mat out, I don't know if you can see from this angle, that's now cutting on a really strange angle and consequently, round right about here, we're getting multiple trace, I'm doing 10 times um, over trace and it's just sort of ghosting over the shape, so that's a total write off, so I'm going to cancel that and there we go there's another problem with the machine actually you can't cancel as far as i can tell a cut mid print the only way you can do it is with this so we'll try it again just while i wait for things to start up and it's actually a couple of minutes startup time it runs off a raspberry pi this thing you'll see that these little knurled areas on the bars so what happens if you don't have it balanced out nicely, I guess really what you should be doing is having one out there, one out there and one roughly in the middle. But what I've found is when you're cutting these really thick materials, 0.8 polypropylene is really thick for this machine, um, it's best if you're cutting in the middle of the mat. Cutting out this way tends to make things try and slip, the cutting forces I guess acts as a moment around the centre roller. So what I'm going to try and do is, I've never done this before actually, I'm going to not use this third roller and I'm just going to use the two middle ones on the two milled sections and there's little leaves at the back, I'll go through all this uh, in another video but we'll just space those out and we'll give the thing another try just with two rollers so take two on the, uh, the cut in front uh, but this time I'm going to show you how to um, how to origin the machine to so the set origin button and basically you have this little keypad here which allows you to jog the axis and you can press shift and an arrow key on the keyboard to do that a little bit more easily so I'm going to do that now. So shift and arrow makes a bigger movement, single arrow key is a small sort of jog. So somewhere about there will do for a test. I think that'll do. There's a few different settings on this. Again, I'll go through this in more detail on another video, but um, you might occasionally see me playing around with this. That's a blade tension. There's a little spring in there. You can rack it up to cut through thick materials in theory. So I've got the two rollers down and back, one roller up. Let's try giving this a cut again. So I'm going to hit cut.
Okay, so here it is. It hasn't turned out incredibly well. I'm beginning to think that 0.8 is a little bit thick for a stencil material. Um, oh, to have my laser cutter back. Um, there's some double edging here where basically it slips. There's so much force from the spring pressure that the uh, the rollers can't can't move the um, the material, so it just gets stuck a little bit. So I'll pull it off and see just if it has cut through enough and to be honest it hasn't that would need finishing off it can be done i have done stencils in this stuff but i think it absolutely goes through the knife so i'm just going to run that entire program again uh, except i'm going to do it in 0.5 stencil material and see if that comes out take three this is quite a nice little feature though i'm a big fan of any tool that gives you space to hide all your nonsense. Right, off we go. And this time I've spaced out the rolls again. It's got one in the middle, two on the two knurled things. So that should be absolutely fine. I think I'm gonna to default to that after that last experiment. So take two and instead of cutting through 10 times for the material, we'll just go through eight, which is probably a little bit overkill to be honest. But what it does is it works its way through the material gradually instead of having a big cut in force. So let's give that a go. And what I need to remember to do is actually set the origin. Take four. Try again. Rolls are down. I've actually set an origin this time. Cut. Because the one good thing about the KNK Force is it actually does have a variable Z axis, unlike a lot of uh, sort of CAD knives, which are just on or off. So there's all kinds of funky stuff you can do with this, like you can use a um, a rotary tool and put it in and use it as a very very light duty milling machine or a PCB drill so that's something we'll be having an experiment with in coming weeks now let's have a look so some of them I've cut all the way through and that's pretty good others not so much um, but with a little bit of uh, love with a craft knife that's going to turn out just fine so I played around with some more settings I um, reset the tool height so hopefully this should give a good result. So pull it off. And that's a good sign because they're coming out already. And it looks like with a few changes we're um, we're there and we've got our correct cutting depth. So that's the K and K force with some central cutting. We'll look at that in more detail in a future five minute fire day. But in the meantime, if you like these kind of videos, you want to see more from the K and K force, do like, subscribe and comment.